All right, good. So he takes him out. Uh, I think he played that pretty well too. He waited until he made his hand on the river to to put more money in, and the guy just fell for it, like you know, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, queen seven. Yeah, I'll fold it this time. Probably raise it if it happens like that next time. But as you can see, we're in the money now. We're the shortest stack, but um, we still have you know pretty much our the same chips that we had when we doubled up. And in this situation, in this sit and go, um, doubling up on that ace king hand was pretty much what changed changed my game plan. You know, at that point, I was like, okay, I'm I'm pretty much guaranteed to get to get third, unless I do something stupid or just get really unlucky. Um, and you know, a lot of times that's all you really need if you want to show profit in sit and goes. Um, if you get that double up, you know, I mean, it was a risk. I took a risk on a race, you know, but I analyzed it to where I was like almost a hundred percent sure that I was in a race or or better you know um, so you know it was a pretty it was a good call I think and I ended up winning that race and after that you know I mean you can't when you make a risky play like that early in a sit and go and it pays off for you you can't uh, just give your chips away you know you need to actually show profit from it because you're only gonna rate win that situation you know one out of two times so if you win that race you know you need to show money because if you lose the race you you lose you, you lose your eleven dollar buy-in so I needed to at least make make sure I uh, showed a profit which I did and now my now my quest is just to win this thing I could have bet that guy but So I'm going to start opening up, up my game a little more. Um, playing a little more pots. It's a good raise by that guy. Uh, I limped there. He raised. I folded. I might do that one more time with a weak hand. And then uh, and then if he, if I get a, a good hand the next time, I'll just do it again. And hopefully he'll raise and, you know, I can trap him. You see, I got a queen seven suited here. Um, it's a pretty good hand, I think. Three handed, it's you know, it's better than average. So, but he calls a raise, uh, and I'm just gonna fold this. I don't, uh, I don't know. I could raise, but I think, I think they'd call. So I'll just get out of the pot. All right, so I need to make something happen here soon. Uh, I'm not going to call with a two jack. But here you go. I'm going to just limp in. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he raises me again. But he doesn't this time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just bet this. It'll tell me for 300 chips, it'll tell me if he has a pair. And I don't mind taking the pot down with just an ace high there. On the button, I'm going to want to raise a lot of a lot of hands. Um, not really getting any hands right now, but that's not it's not an excuse, you know. We still uh, still think I can take this thing down. Just, I'm definitely gonna have to double up, though. I mean, I've got 1,600 in chips, and blinds are 75, 150. So, uh, the next pot I play, I'm gonna have to be ready to play for all my chips. Um, I don't have enough chips to just raise here, so I'm gonna have to check. Even though he's weak, you know, it looks like a very weak play to. Uh, to just limp in there. All right, queen king. I'm gonna try to just uh, limp in again. Should probably raise, but hopefully I can trap him. It doesn't work. Uh, now I'm just gonna trap him on the flop. Probably just check call here, even though you know it's a pretty vulnerable play. 
but I don't really think he has much, and I've got a pretty strong hand heads up. Top pair, you know, second best kicker. Um, well, I'm just going to have to bet now. I don't want to flush, flush the hit there. Which it does, but I'm still going to bet it. And he pays me off. Alright, so we made a little bit of money there. We're second in chips now. But uh, we still have a long way to go. This player here has 9,000. So, you know, still need to double up. Alright, now I'm going to raise him because he just limped in again. And I have enough chips to be able to raise. Last time around I didn't, you know, and it ended up losing the pot for me because, you know, I didn't have anything for a hand and I'm just going to get out of this one. Even getting 5 to 1 odds. I'm going to raise this king suited. Didn't want that call from the short stack, so hopefully I hit a king or some spades. Um, yeah, well that sucks for me, but it's actually probably pretty good because the short stack might be called calling here all his chips, which would put me heads up. Um, you know, it would give him a huge lead if he wins, but... Uh, you know, heads up. I think uh, I think even though he might he's gonna have a huge chip lead against me, um, I'll take that. So now, as you see, this guy's really short stack. He's got 700 chips. Um, he's gonna be willing to push a lot of different hands. So I'm gonna. Ha I mean, just you just need to be able to realize that. You know, doesn't mean I'm gonna call with a three four, but you know he's going to be pushing better than than normal raising hands there I'm just going to fold that right now this guy should probably be raising almost every every hand he's got enough chips that even if he doubles me up you know he's uh Oops, meant to make it three times, but I just min-raised. Um, even if he doubles me up, you know, he he still would have the dominating chip lead, so... He, just, he should raise almost every hand and just put pressure on us, because, you know, if he does that a lot, then we're just going to be folding almost everything. And uh, see that right there? That's a good raise by him. Because we're going to be folding a lot more, and we're just going to get chipped down, you know, blind by blind, and and he can afford to do that so I'm um, gonna just put this guy all in here ace 10 you know likely have the best hand wouldn't wouldn't really want a call there but I wouldn't mind it either because I'm likely a favorite And this guy's just getting blinded out. I mean, blinds are 150, and he let himself get down to 400. Uh, you should never let that ever let that happen. I'd just be going all in almost every hand. I wouldn't limp into a hand like he just did, because he just gave 75 chips that he didn't need to. When he might have just won the hand preflop if he went all in. I don't want him to go all in on this hand because my hand is so weak. 
So that means he's probably going to, yeah. Um, so, you know, even though I have a... a uh, should I? Yeah, I have to call. I mean, I'm getting over 2-1. to one. So I'm gonna have to gonna have to suck out here, which I don't. Um, but you know, I mean, I kind of got just sucked in there. I guess I could have folded, but I don't know. I don't really see folding anything there, getting over two to one when I'm most likely live. Hmm. Now this is an interesting one. Um. Hmm. He's been raising a lot, so I'm actually gonna fold this ace queen here. <laughs> Damn, it's seven ten. But uh, you know, ace queen's not really that big of a favorite against a random hand like that. Um, turns out I would have won, but. Still, I was, you know, I was not the favorite going in, so. But that kind of sucks for me because now I'm the short stack and I got to push an ace four. And I'm going to have to get be the aggressive one now, you know, and just start raising and raising because I'm the one with the short stack. I'm just going to call or right, check and fold. <laughs> might have might have pushed preflop there but um also probably could have would have gotten called and then this flop would not be a good flop for ace 5 against the hand that would call me preflop. Gonna fold that one, get out of the way. Um. Actually, I'm just gonna do a little raise here, which is probably not a good play. Actually, I know it's not a good play. Um, yeah, I kind of regret that I just did that, but should have just gone all in. Because now he, uh, with any pocket pair, he's going to feel like he's got the best hand. But I can't fold an ace king on a 299 flop, you know, so I'm going to have to call. Because he would make that play with uh, with any ace, you know, like that. So I just got to dodge a, uh, a river, which I do, and uh, win that pot. And now we're heads up. So he's got a uh, over three to one chip lead. Blinds are one in two hundred though, so I still have enough room to kind of play around. I'm gonna just call this and see what's going on in the flop. Didn't hit anything, and you know his continuation bet. I'm gonna have to fold. What it looks like I'm going to be able to do, though, um, is since he's got the chips he's and he's playing aggressive, I think I'm going to be able to just trap him. So I'm going to play small pots, let him do the betting. Um, like right here, you know, I've, I've probably got the best hand with a king eight. And he checks that, so... Uh, I'm actually going to just shove all in here. I think I have the best hand. Ooh, wow, he had a full house. A very bad read on me. But uh anyway, so we uh we get second place, you know. Uh it's about twenty seven dollars, so it's a sixteen dollar profit. Uh not the best finish, you know, but it works. And it all pretty much came from that early gamble with the ace king. So anyways, um hopefully this doesn't have to be broken up into six different videos, but We'll see. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.